This is the Brave New Coin Crypto Conversation, hosted by Andy Pickering. Hi everyone, Andy Pickering here. I'm your host and welcome to the Crypto Conversation, a Brave New Coin podcast where we talk to the people building the future in the Bitcoin, blockchain and cryptocurrency space. My guest today is Owen O'Donoghue. Owen is the co-founder of InfiniGods, a Web3 gaming studio that's building a suite of uh, fun free-to-play blockchain games. Welcome to the show, Owen. Hey, thanks for having me, Andy. It is a pleasure. We'll do what we do at the beginning of the show, Owen, which is I'll invite you to introduce yourself. like to hear a a little bit of your, I guess, professional backstory in the lead up uh, to co-founding InfiniGods. I see you've spent time at uh, Meta slash Facebook. So yeah, let's um, let's hear a bit of the background, Owen. Uh, For sure, yeah. I've um, spent uh, the first and last 20 years of of my career um, in technology, I um, actually started off in Microsoft in um, in Europe and um, moved to Facebook in 2010 as they were building out a really building out their their commercial uh, business in um, in Europe. And uh, when I was at Facebook, um, really stumbled upon games and um, gaming as a as a business was a um, was a gamer obviously um, all my life. Um, and really cut my teeth and, and uh, built a lot of my career based off of uh, my experiences at Facebook. <clears throat> um, very fortunate to be part of a lot of um, games that actually launched on Facebook um, before there was even mobile gaming. And then to see and be part of that transition where um, a lot of games transitioned from being desktop based to mobile, which reshaped gaming and reshaped the entertainment industry um, as we know it today. Um, uh, I've spent... Um, uh, the really the last few years um, started to really see um, Web three and uh, blockchain uh, games that that use blockchain beginning to more and more um, pop up um, and start to see the uh, how that was changing player behavior and changing some of the opportunities um, in the space. Yes, indeed. So, what what is it specifically about? Um, I guess like uh, the promise and potential of of Web three and and blockchain gaming that you thought. Well, this is uh, this could be a natural transition for me. There, there could be something here. This could be, you know, perhaps the uh, the next evolution of gaming. Yeah, I, th- I think it's 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 it kind of starts with Web three in general. Um, and I kind of joke I've been part of Web one uh, through Microsoft at the tail end, um, their MSN and um, businesses there, and then um, uh, Facebook was very much Web two where. Um, uh, you create the content, but you give it to um, the aggregator, and they 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 own it, they, they, they monetize it, et cetera. And then Web3, um, the promise that actually you own your own digital assets. And um, it was really as that um, is evolving and is growing and it is still growing today, um, it's how you apply uh, the idea of uh, applying player ownership into, uh, into, into a game's economy um, actually presents a lot more opportunities uh, for people to enjoy the game more, um, to monetize more in a game, which is very important if you're a developer. And actually change some of the behaviors that certain gamers um, uh, will uh, will act out in, in a game, and and that in itself is incredibly in, an interesting um, uh, revolution in terms of what you can do with the technology. And it's 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 for me it it it, it appeared more and more that this was similar to the desktop to mobile gaming transition that we saw a decade ago that we we're transitioning from. Um, Developer-owned centric cl- wall gardens, um, from a gaming point of view, into this this potential for interoperable gaming assets, real player ownership, players trading in game, um, a trading tra- trading assets are trading uh, cryptocurrency, um, uh, and and can really um, reinvigorate a um, an industry that had had to be quite honest for the last I'd say three or four years, um, really not done too much innovation. Um, I'm particularly talking about free to play games. Got it. All right. Well, let's uh, talk about um, InfiniGods uh, then, uh, Owen. So I, I suppose, yeah, you're the co-founder. Um, tell us a, a little bit about the uh, the origin story and, um, yeah, the name, InfiniGods. What's that about? <laughs> yeah, we, we, the origin story is kind of interesting because we had, we had a name, actually, that was a lot different, but we were told we couldn't uh, use it uh, for various naming rights. Um, 
but uh, which, I'll, which I, I can get into. But 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 essentially, my my um, uh, my co-founder is Damon Gura. He he's um, he was the CEO of DGN Games. Um, it was a a, um, a mobile gaming company he created in 2014. Uh, he actually built uh, the first game um, in his spare time. Uh, launched it on Facebook originally uh, when Facebook had a very strong games platform. Um, I actually um, kind of bumped into him and uh, we hit it off. Um, he scaled his game, actually sold his company to an Australian company, Crown Crown Resorts, in um, 2015, and actually managed. Um, DGN Games uh, for five years after that, scaling it to, um, I think they did close to $300 million in revenue in uh, 2021, which is important because he has a lot of experience in operating and scaling gaming businesses. Um, but we, we we got together, we were always looking at what was happening in gaming and um, the, you know, uh, we, we come across CryptoKitties in 2018 which was very interesting. And even as my career as a, as a director in Facebook on the games team, um, we always noticed some of the metrics that that game exhibited compared to other games that we worked with were actually very interesting and very um, uh, very deep. And it was particularly the player ownership and that people owned a cat in the game and they could actually breed other cats. And you know what, if, if they got bored or wanted to move on, they could just actually trade that cat. Um, and so it was just very interesting. and. Fast forward to the pandemic and particularly um, some of the behaviors we saw with uh, Axie Infinity and just the numbers that they were producing. And so, um, you know, I think the number that really stuck out, um, they generated about uh, $300 million in sales in one month from, you know, barely 1 million users. So that, that's an unheard of metric. Um, and that was something that said, hey, okay, that's interesting. Let's look into these types of gaming models. And so, so all the play to earn stuff. Um, but as we kind of looked into the models, we felt a lot of things were missing from the space. We thought a lot of the games or projects as they call themselves at the time, this is in, in kind of you know, mid 2021, yeah. really identified that play to earn gaming was the thing. And we said, actually, I don't think it's the thing because most game economies can't survive that way. If there's speculation or people can't earn, then they stop playing. And so you're dead. Uh, your game is dead from, from that side. But we we looked at some of the other behaviors that were going on where uh, people were very excited to have an asset that was theirs that they can potentially play in other games. Um, and we also looked at the um, potential to allow players to, to take certain parts of your economy in a game. And say, look, instead of me as a developer, like a central bank, just printing them as much as you want, it's actually, you know what? I'm going to allow you to farm them and earn them in-game. And you can transfer them to other players via NFTs, via blockchain, because that's a good public ledger. We, we can't interfere with that. And we can actually start to, um, start to really uh, understand and develop other player behaviors beyond the ones that we've seen over the last decade. And maybe those new behaviors actually will be a, a net benefit. And so, um, and so, yeah, we really went into it that and um, probably the other thing, um, which, you know, it, it's going to be maybe controversial. There's just no fun games yeah. <laughs> that were web three. Um, there was it's a lot of stuff if you're developing a game or an internet business, you're like friction is really hard. Yeah. I got to read these white papers they're talking about staking, liquidity pools. I go, well, I, I just want to play a game. And so we said, we need to start with building something that's free to play and it's fun to play. And then we can layer in whatever we want after that once people actually enjoy it. Because if they don't like it, it's 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 uh, it, it ain't going to work no matter what you do. Yeah, all, all makes sense on and... Uh, I mean, sorry, but you never quite got to the um, the um, the meaning of infinity gods I, and the, the the idea of this. Uh, this seems like a kind of ancient mythology um, theme running through all your stuff, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so we we actually just wanted to. Um, it, it started with interoperability, so we said we want to make games with a. They could be different games um, in terms of the genre, but they have the same theme. And um, we we actually um, thought, you know, like, uh, and also we looked at geographically, how could we like relate to every single, to, to a lot of people out there. And so we said, let's let's look at ancient mythologies. It's it's open IP that's developed um, uh, from that side. So we don't need to worry about that. And actually it's very recognizable. 
and understandable. And so we, um, uh, we, we looked at ancient mythologies and who are the most powerful uh, um, things in those mythologies. Well, it's the gods. Um, and that's the name of our first collection um, was called the elder gods. So Zeus and Poseidon. And we, we have started with four different um, mythologies uh, from four uh, regions, but, and, but we'll expand. But then the infinity was, um, was like, it's the permanence, it's the blockchain. Uh, it's that once you, um, you know, and again, it's why one of the things why you would, you would uh, look at a web three to build a game. It's that um, people have these assets from us and they are theirs forever. So if we cease to exist as a company, uh, another company can build games for that or um, other companies can do that right now, or they have that, this, they have this asset. Um, and so the concept of infinity we felt just felt um, just fit in very nicely into um, uh, a web three and uh, the permanence um, uh, that the uh, blockchain gives you. Got it. Got it. And I can see, Owen, that um, you uh, you guys have some some reasonably uh, good backing from uh, the likes of Pantera Capital and uh, and Framework Ventures. So, uh, you know, those are those are, those are good names. Animo- Animoca, is that how you say it? Animoca Brands? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, they're, yeah, they're big as well. So. Um, obviously, some some uh, solid investors who um, uh, can yeah believe in in, in the vision and, and what you guys are doing, uh, which is great. That said, um, you I'm sure you're only too well aware, uh, Owen, that you know it's a it's sort of a a slightly more challenging time for Web three or crypto blockchain the whole thing really uh at the moment um you know crypto bear market um lots going on in in, in the world um is it sort of is is it harder to get traction and attract new users at the moment or is it kind of a good thing in that the the lull in the market allows you to um you know keep building as as the cliche goes and um get some some more of those um uh paved stones in place uh for the next wave of of users and look I'm, i mean you you're, you're a facebook guy so you know this stuff way better than almost anyone else on the planet but you know how do you get those new users where does the next uh, adoption cycle come from if you like yeah it, it's it's a really good question and i think the starting point is um it, it, it's it's really the how does the mar- how have the market conditions affected what you're doing um I think for us, we've been incredibly lucky because really pre, I suppose, the summer when we saw Ethereum begin to really drop down um, and the bear market officially was there. We saw NFTs, you know, uh, et cetera, um, fall from there uh, at the highs. Um, what it clearly showed was that some parts of the, the model in 2021 were not sustainable. Um, and we had a particular big decision point. Um, do we tokenize? Um, do we tokenize our games? And so by that, um, I mean, do I take the core economic currency in my game and uh, make it a tradable token? Um, uh, so uh, like an ERC-20 is what we typically see today. ApeCoin is a great example of that uh, for Yuga. And there's others out there as well. Um, that was, let's say, the market and um, uh, what it suggested we should have done that. Some investors we didn't work with very heavily wanted us to do that before we were raising. Um, but it was very clear by the middle of the summer that actually you would then be, all you were doing is paying attention to what's my token price doing? How do I how do I get it higher? And so you wouldn't be optimized on, which is how do I build a fun game uh, and get people in there? And so we, uh, I think we're actually very lucky. It also cleared the path where a lot of people exited. Um, what, where it affected, um, where it affected from a user behavior, there's, there's two types of um, users, I would say, in Web3 gaming or in, um, uh, right now. Um, I think there's first the, um, th- which was the vast majority, which was, um, I'm really looking at this as an investment asset that I could buy um, land in Alluvium or I could buy a ship in Star Atlas or, and um, yes, I kind of want to try it out in the game, but actually I think this is a speculative asset and I want to buy it at a price because I think at some point in the future, I can um, uh, make a profit off that. And I think that was um, a lot. I think once that started to drip, it dropped down, a lot of people left. And in fact, we even saw the data um, from uh, certain marketplaces like OpenSea where um, but the volume of transactions, but the unique wallets 
purchasing and trading non-fungible tokens dramatically dropped. So if your business plan was built around, I do a very big NFT mint, and then I try and uh, make revenue off the secondaries, or I have a token that comes from that, essentially that all became um, uh, not a good prop, didn't look like a good proposition at all by the end of the summer. And, and, and from that, that actually reinformed our strategy of like sticking to what we, what we knew very well, which was if you want to make a fun game, but you want to make a business out of it, it's look to layer in um, uh, uh, microtransactions in our purchases uh, where it makes sense um, and use them as your primary revenue and use uh, things like non-fungible tokens and player ownership as a way to boost player retention and engagement. Uh, because the more they're engaged, the more they will um, uh, participate economically in your game. And so I think we, um, I would say we, we really dodged the bullet uh, by that. Um, and then our strategy, um, you know, has moved forward. And so, you know, moving on to the other part of your question and user, um, uh, getting new users. Um, um, I think the, the tactics um, uh, that were used over the last two years, which was build a community uh, via Discord primarily, Twitter was your, your primary uh, loud, um, it, megaphone to tell more people about that. I think while that's still there, um, what we were able to tap into was using other, um, what we would call user acquisition channels. And so been able to identify, okay, who's a gamer? Um, uh, are they actually in Discord and Twitter? Well, some, but, but not that often, but they're on places like TikTok, they're on, they're on Facebook, they're on Instagram, um, they're in other places. And so we started to, um, from, a, from, from, a, from a user growth point of view, once we launched the game, we were able to actually access those channels plus others to bring players into our game. And from there, they'll discover, um, um, you know, if they like the game and they continue to play, then what we found is they're then discovering, ah, actually, there's something I really want. And it just happens to be on blockchain or there's something here that I can take um, in game and actually move it on chain if I want. Um, and so that's how, um, so, so in a, um, and this goes for gaming in general, um, even in market situations like this, Gaming typically does very, very well um, um, uh, in general. Uh, we, saw that, uh, we saw that around 2008, 2009. Gaming actually did incredibly well where we had a market crash. Um, uh, it always does well in general. It's like the biggest form of entertainment on the planet. Yes. Uh, it has over 2.5 billion participants. Um, it's huge. Um, and so um, if anything, I think the lack of that distraction of some of those other mechanics have actually really helped us. And um, we see, you know, we've had over 10,000 people play our first game, which is a prototype in 60 days uh, with really not much, um, you know, with some pretty basic tactics that we've used. And so we feel pretty good about the ability to scale, um, to scale our games even further. Yeah, and look, I mean, you are exactly right, Owen. Um, gaming is uh, simply, you know, it's, it's one of the biggest uh, industries uh, on the planet, certainly in terms of how people um, like to spend their discretionary entertainment hours, <laughs> I, I suppose. And of course, you know, that's even more true with, with the younger generations who are more um, technologically savvy, of course. But that said, you know, I'm sure you'll agree that blockchain gaming is a tiny, tiny fraction of that uh, gaming market. I, I guess the, the, the good side of that is that there's incredible scope, um, infinite scope, really, uh, to grow uh, in, in the years ahead. So you mentioned your first um, first release, if you like, Owen. It's called Infini Merge, isn't it? So, yeah, I mean, maybe just... Uh, well, tell us what Infinity Merge is, and uh, you know, help help people out by kind of relating it to some existing games that people might have heard of, and also, yeah, let's let's hear how uh, people can engage with it and and play Infinity Merge. Lots of questions there, Owen, but yeah, Infinity Merge, <laughs> go for, go for gold. Yeah, and first, I'd ask you know people to check out. Um, uh, it's it's available on web right now. Uh, Infinity Merge that X Y Z, and so. It's basically Candy Crush, but with some web, with simpler, with Web three elements, um, and and that and that's that's the uh, that's the high level description. And so what in Infinimerge is is um, is players have uh, various puzzles to solve, um, and instead of matching three pieces of the same color, um, it's it's actually merging three pieces of the same uh, type. And uh, once those three pieces merge, they actually merge into a higher order higher order piece. Uh, that gives you points. Um, and there's actually 
various strategies around how you group them together. And over time, people start to learn, actually, if I combine these things, um, I'll get a higher score. Um, but it's designed to be very simple just to start playing. And then over time, um, uh, some of the more expert players treat it as a chessboard. Um, uh, other players just use it to, um, uh, to really relax and play. So very, very simple um, game, uh, similar to Candy Crush. Um, uh, what's, sim what's simpler, um, what's probably important to explain for background is uh, most of those casual puzzle games um, that people will play on iPhones or, or, or if they're on Samsung phones, et cetera, um, uh, while they're free to play, they have power-ups in the game. And a lot of people use those power-ups. And so if you've ever played uh, Candy Crush, they allow you to remove a piece. If you're stuck, get more moves. Um, uh, to upgrade a piece so you can you can you can um, uh, crush more candy, um, and so we do the same thing. We have two power ups in the game. Um, one power up is an NFT. Uh, it's a it's a digital collectible uh, as we're as we call it, um, and that is uh, it's our it's our Elder God collection uh, that's on OpenSea, and um, depending on the god you have, there's a different power that um, you you um, that you have. And for for example. Uh, one power, um, uh, if you use it, if you have the NFT, is you can upgrade a piece without doing a merge, um, and you get points for that. Um, uh, what's interesting is um, uh, we don't want the game to be uh, pay for um, pay to win, so people can only use that god once a day. So the minute you use it, it goes into a twenty four hour uh, cooldown period. But so that's one, and that's that's a very similar model to a lot of uh, Web two or mobile games. We then have more of a medium power-up and we call them followers. So you've got gods and you've got people who follow them, followers. And um, this is actually something you just get in game. Um, and um, uh, and uh, I'll explain how, how you get it, but what followers do, um, uh, and there's followers based off different mythologies, but essentially uh, instead of being a really big power-up like a god, uh, followers can do two things. They have their own minor power-up, uh, removing a small piece, um, uh, maybe merging uh, pieces if you don't have enough of the same type. Um, so they add to your score if you use them correctly and the right way. But what they also do is they refresh your god. Uh, so if you have used it once, you want to use it again, you sacrifice a follower and the god uses it. And we have a, we have a mechanic that, um, uh, that does that. What, what we're testing there is via having a, a non-fungible token or digital collectible in your game, um, uh, you know, will people look to refresh it and use it more often if you set, if you if you set it if you put a set of rules around how it can be used in game, uh, and also even the playing field for people who don't have those um, assets as well. But what's interesting um, and where we think we've hit on something quite big and novel um, isn't the gameplay, but it's how uh, um, it's what people can do with followers, uh, which are off-chain uh, rewards. Um, so you earn them firstly completing a level, like you get one, two, three stars, same as in Candy Crush. If you get three stars, you get three followers. We have tournaments for each level. So you have a leaderboard ranking every week. So if you do very well, you'll get more followers. If you don't, you get none, et cetera. And so players have a choice. So they get, um, so if you accumulated a, a, some of these followers, they're in your, in your game account and you can use them to continue to get past all the levels, to compete better in tournaments, et cetera. To refresh your gods if you like using using them using your gods as part of how you play the game or you can actually um uh, put them on chain via a platform we've created um and where we spend actually most of our most of our time building and so that platform um its front-facing name is the shipwright uh where we we give it different we're going to be giving it different names based off the game uh well off the different games we have um but what that means is the player can actually take those followers. If they don't want to use them for their own gameplay, there's demand for other players to get more followers. And so players generate them themselves and they, they put them on chain and then other players can buy them. And so that model um, has been running for about 60 days. And um, uh, we've seen, you know, um, uh, over 600 sales. We've seen um, a large percentage of our audience actually engage in either they mint and create these kind of gaming NFTs. And then these other folks who just want to like consume as much content in the game as possible and want as many followers to help them do that. And they're coming in and buying that. And so that behavior is very interesting because what it starts to say is to actually make your game 
Web3, you can really keep a lot of Web2 elements alive. And then you can give players a choice. You can earn part of, part of, the, um, part of the gaming assets. You can earn that and you can decide to use yourself or you can trade to other players. And what um, I think very, why it's very interesting is this has been done in Web2 before. Um, games like World of Warcraft, I think, are very well known. Certain players uh, farm coins, they go out and then they sell them to other players on um, you know, third-party exchanges that may or may not be super secure. And so we're really just looking at adding that behavior into well-understood gaming genres, um, and, but using the blockchain as the source of, yes, these are legitimate. If you, if you, this is a real thing, it, it will work if you um, uh, bring it into your game account. And so um, the early data has been so promising um, um, that this is, this, is, this is what we've built into all our uh, future games is that parts of the economy, some will be pure in our purchase, some will be um, uh, pure digital collectibles from the start. So they'll be scarce and you got to deal with scarcity in a game economy, but that's actually fun to deal with. And then things will be off-chain, but they can be converted to on-chain based off what the player wants to do. So... That was probably a bit of a mouthful um, um, on uh, what the game is, but I think it's a very interesting prototype and a model that we'll see more and more games, including ours, adopt. Yeah, very interesting indeed. And uh, who's who have you got developing these games on? Like, I'm um, I'm curious. Is it you know are there uh, are there people that um, you know are kind of good at developing you know more traditional Web two uh, mobile games? Um, you know, what do your developers think of the Web three elements? Um, yeah, it's 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 interesting. So, I mean, our team we've um, uh, about fifteen in the US uh, were remote, and then we have uh, uh, fifteen in Eastern Europe uh, in, in a studio that we 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 have there as well. And, and we spent a lot of time building up, hiring, uh, training, and, and, and onboarding staff. And um, our team is very interesting. Um, we have a lot of people who built mobile games and have ex- expertise in free to play, but we've been very conscious to um, to also recruit team members who have um, Web three experience. And that actually extends. You know, marketing is the obvious part. How do you actually you know market to people who are very interested in this space? whether that's as an ETH collector or somebody who is a, um, a Web3 gamer. Um, but also they play a huge part in product and thinking about the free-to-play Web2 elements that may make sense to move on-chain and elements that, 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 that doesn't make to move on-chain. Um, and again, all with the, the guys of making a very fun uh, game. Um, so um, to give you a sense, some of our team have worked on uh, worked with companies like Zynga, EA, um, Scopely, uh, um, these are our companies who have like scale mobile games um, to top grossing. And for people who don't know, a, a, a top 10 grossing mobile game makes $2 million per day. Um, so it's really insane numbers. Like think about movies and things, think about music and, you know, mobile games blow them away and actually blow away most AAA games, uh, which again, I think is, 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 is news is, is interesting to know. Um, so uh, we've recruited that team. Um, the way we've looked uh, with our games is really, um, a lot of the core game mechanics work very well. Um, the problem is they don't incentivize people to participate in them monetarily enough. Um, and, but we think actually blockchain can really fix that, um, um, and can help solve that problem. And if blockchain solves that problem, what that actually means is we get better games because developers live off feedback and the ultimate feedback is like, yes, I like this, therefore I'm willing to pay to extend my experience. And you reinvest that into the gaming experience. So you build more levels, you build better artwork, et cetera, et cetera. So I think, um, I think what we're, we're going to see is just a whole host of better games that adopt various aspects of blockchain technology. And in fact, they do it in a way that people don't even know that there's a lot of people won't even know that there's actually um, blockchain tech, uh, like they wouldn't know there's an Amazon server or, 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 or something else there. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Well, as we finish off this uh, part of the podcast, Owen, um, you just t- tell people, uh, you know, the website where they should go to to learn all, all about in- Infinity Gods and uh, the different NFTs that are available, but also, yeah, the games uh, that are working on. Um, yeah, where should people go? So, the, so, so the best is actually follow us on Twitter at Infinity Gods. Um, uh, um, that's we we post a lot of our updates there. Our website is infinigods.com. 
Um, and so you'll see um, our games listed there, including Infinimerge, which is live. Uh, we have a second game um, uh, that is uh, going into beta in the next three weeks, be kind of like Command and Conquer, a pretty cool game. And then we have a third unannounced game um, that will be coming out uh, later in the, uh, the second quarter of this year. Awesome. Let's go do a very quick break and then we'll come back. We'll have some fun. We'll run Owen through the very famous crypto conversation hot take round back in one second. In today's crypto market, the team at Brave New Coin are the sector's leading builders of custom crypto indices. BNC's powerful indexing engine draws on Brave New Coin's premium data to calculate high frequency intraday and end of day indices for a wide range of index products. BNC's custom indices help you to gain exposure to the crypto assets class and track your performance against the market without having to become a stock picker. Not sure what you need? A Brave New Coin consultant can help you assess your requirements. Contact BNC today to find out more. All right, we are back and I'm with Owen O'Donoghue, co-founder and Finigods of the Web3 Gaming Studio. Owen, as you may or may not know, uh, I like to finish each podcast with a quick round of rapid fire crypto conversation hot takes. Are you up for it? Yeah, let's do it. Just going to run some questions at you, Owen. Just want you kind of honest um, hot take style, quick and snappy answers, kind of how we do it. Um, yeah, don't know what you say for the first question, but the first question is uh, where would you say that you sit on the Bitcoin maximalist uh, to multi chain opportunist spectrum? Multi chain <laughs> all day long. Yeah, no surprise there. Okay, what would you say, Owen, is your firmest conviction crypto opinion? Polygon is going to win, and I'm not a, I'm not a matic at all before this year, but and their tech is whatever, but they're they're clearly winning. Interesting. Okay, uh, Owen, Bill Gates famously said that we tend to overestimate what we can accomplish in two years and underestimate what we can accomplish in ten. Uh, with that in mind, you know, whatever you like, but let's say, I guess, Web three gaming. What does it look like in ten years' time? I think I think by that stage we will have AAA games that use it. Um, so we will we will accomplish that. Um, Mobile games will be long before that, I would predict in, 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 in maybe that two-year time frame. Uh, but I, and I know there's not a quick snappy answer, but I think the vast majority of games will have player ownership in some capacity built into it, and that'll be almost be the default. Yeah, absolutely. And please don't don't feel uh, it doesn't have to be too quick and snappy. We want your insights as well, Owen. Um, flip side of that is, you know, William Gibson said, of course, that the future is already here. It's just not evenly distributed. With that in mind, Owen, can you think of an example of the future being here right now, but most people just aren't really aware of it? I, the, it the, from a gaming perspective of blockchain, the infrastructure is there and the set of rules are there to scale a, a, a massive mobile game that, um, that uses blockchain technology. And I think what we're waiting for, and again, what we're, we're trying to do is, is we need companies to take a pretty big shot um, at that. Um, and to give your listeners more context, there are blockchain games on the iOS store. Um, um, we need to get a fun one in there. We need to get one that actually has a, a good team behind it. Um, and we'll see a we'll see a game that, you know, tens of millions of people are playing as opposed to what we have today, where it's, you know, uh, maybe a few hundred thousand are playing these games. Absolutely. Makes sense. All right. Um, more of a, uh, I guess, social media question for you, Owen. You know, you spent a lot of time deep in the heart of Facebook. Uh, we've talked a little bit about Twitter today. Um, yeah, just any kind of thoughts on the kind of uh, the yeah positives and negatives of these um, really Web2 uh, social media platforms. Um, do you use them yourself? Where do you personally spend time? Would you let your kids on them? Big question. Yeah, big question. I think um, I'd be very careful around letting your kids. Um, we have very young kids here, um, but we'll probably have to deal with that soon. Um, I, I think, look, net net, they're good because they provide communication. Um, um, I think, uh, you know, in, in terms of where where they're going, it really depends on the platform. Um, I, I think Facebook itself, AK Meta, and maybe Facebook again. Um, I think is going through a pretty big pivot 
back uh, to focusing on its uh, core, um, you know, its core business, which is essentially advertising and, and player and sorry and, and user engagement, as they would call it. And I, I, it looks like they're rolling away from the metaverse, which is super interesting, I think. Um, uh, but you know, it's you look at the time spent um, and the latest trend is it's not necessarily the whether it's TikTok or Facebook uh, or, or Instagram or whatever. It's the format. And so the thing that I think everybody has lost is um, uh, we had newsfeed as people would, would do that Twitter, Facebook. We had stories via Snapchat and then Facebook and others actually cloned it. And now we have reels. And reels, if you look at the data from both TikTok and Facebook, is eating up so much time for, for people. And so um, you'd be very bullish on those companies um, um, uh, monetarily, actually, because now they have even more attention, despite all the stuff that's around them. Um, and it's via this format, which is reels. Um, but again, it's up to where people want to spend their time, um, which is uh, it's, it's hard to predict. It is, um, you know, as as someone who understands um, user metrics um, on, you know, I mean, ChatGPT three and obviously ChatGPT four just released yesterday. But the the, I mean, it obviously took Open AI by surprise as well. But it, was that, yeah? I mean, what did you think of that? That sort of. Um, yeah, the fastest growing, I don't know if it's consumer app, but, you know, technology app in history, really, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think it was the first, um, it had, I mean, it's some various numbers of first X users, and um, which yep. was in, incredibly fast. The stuff that's striking um, is the uh, ChatGBT4 um, that I saw some, some folks on Twitter talking about, and things like doing a security audit on a smart contract. Yes. I, like, are you kidding me? That's amazing. Um, that That is such a move fast moment for innovation. Um, um, so it's it's pretty incredible. Um, I also saw another, um, uh, somebody else actually, they, uh, they, <laughs> They just wrote on a piece of paper a website and, and, and it created. So we're now talking about a level of efficiency we haven't seen since, you know, um, are, are we talking about the level of efficiency we haven't seen since the personal computer in the in the mid 90s uh, got mainstream adoption? I mean, it, it's, it's that kind of scale. No, it really is. I mean, I've seen people say, yeah, it's kind of like the most uh, exciting, you know, technology breakthrough since, I don't know, the invention of the steam engine or, or something <laughs> in terms of the kind of productivity benefits that it can give, you know, the average person, because you're exactly right. I saw those two examples you're talking of, you know, what I loved about the um, the Ethereum uh, smart contract analysis is uh, not, not only kind of points out the vulnerabilities in the code, but uh, I don't know if it's the same example you saw, but it said something to the effect of um, this uh, contract is essentially enabling a Ponzi scheme, um, <laughs> which yeah, is yeah, just, yeah, yeah. it's incredibly insightful. And I mean, man, that is a game changer. <laughs> it's, um, I, t I typically like have an okay head for understanding how you, somebody got to a technical output. I just, AI just boggles how it's able to go and learn and, and take in and so I look from, from from a game developer like smart contract audits I think it, you still need some but it, it shortens that but it's changing things like um, and there's a few companies doing this where like art assets are a huge uh, part of any game and so been able to um, AI to actually generate various versions of that or simply do prototypes all the way to reviewing code I mean um, it should accelerate more and more great games getting out there that's certainly my my hope yeah i think i, I think ai simply accelerates everything um at this point and, and that's for for good and bad it's, it's just how yeah, it is yeah, that's yeah. that's technology that is the story true. of technology uh, let's uh, start to finish this off owen um i guess yeah final question what is your favorite science fiction book film or tv show oh that's a um that's a good one um you know i have to uh Actually, this is a real, this may be nerdy one. Star Trek Deep Space Nine was, I, I was obsessed uh, with that. That was probably one of my favorite ones. Um, yeah, so I'd say that from a sci-fi side. I don't know if, I, again, Deep Space Nine was like 20 years ago, but that was, that was my favorite one. Yeah.
um well we'll take that yeah the found the founder of brave new coin is a massive uh tricky uh we, yep. we the, the the meeting rooms at our uh, old offices used to be named after uh different components of the star trek universe so uh <laughs> we'll take it thank you oh and hey it's been really fun talking to you today um very much enjoyed the conversation nothing else to say really except again just yeah shout out your um your various websites and twitter handles all that good stuff yeah, thanks, thanks so much, Andy. Really appreciate it. And if, if folks want to know more, um, come check us out on Twitter at Infinigods or visit, visit us at um, www.infinigods.com. Uh, check out our games, give us feedback. Um, uh, we love to hear the good, the bad, and the ugly uh, about what we're doing right and wrong. Awesome. Thank you very much, Owen. All the best and bye for now. Thanks, Andy. All right, there you go. That was Owen from Infinigods. So Owen was cool and really did enjoy uh, talking uh, with Owen. But man, this, um, yeah, the AI stuff is absolutely fascinating. Um, I guess, yeah, most people by now have been playing around with um, chat GPT-3. And of course, now the release of four, I'm not a, what is it? I don't know, premium subscription or whatever they call it. I don't have that. So I don't have access to four yet, but I think it could be, could be worth paying. What is it? 20 bucks a month or something just to get the, um, the premium one. I might do that because, yeah, I don't know. You've got to use these tools. Um, I don't know. The world, yeah, the world is speeding up, folks. It is. <laughs> Nothing else to say, really, except the world is speeding up. That is uh, a nice place to leave on. I think thank you for listening uh, to today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe to the Crypto Conversation in whatever podcast app you are using. Uh, but, yeah. That is it. This was the Crypto Conversation for Brave New Coin. See ya.